Um, yeah, I was a miner for um, 19 years. Um, saw big changes in the industry. I came from the construction industry, as a lot of people did in those days. Uh, they needed operators to uh, operate the gear, needed crane drivers, all that sort of stuff, and that's how I started in the industry. Uh, my name's uh, Peter Kennedy. I live here in uh, Musselbrook in the Hunter Valley of New South Wales. I'm uh, in my 50s. I've been living here in Musselbrook now for uh, just on uh, six years. I'm into my uh, 40th year now as a, a heavy equipment operator. I've started out many years ago with my family down on the central coast of New South Wales. Now I, uh, I go to work for a large mining company, uh, approximately 10 minutes drive from here where uh, I drive a dump truck uh, on the, the shift out there. Coal mining here in Musselbrook in the Upper Hunter has been uh, a way of life for people here for uh, over 100 years. There's the old Musselbrook workings up there that have uh, only uh, less than 10 years ago had their, uh, their centenary years. So uh, this is quite a historic town as far as underground coal mining is concerned. The coal mining relationship to Musselbrook is a, um, a millstone around its head. The stratification of the social structure of, mo of people who with money and people without uh, is, is certainly um, very vivid. When you uh, first sign on with these companies, for example, Rio Tinto Extrata, the major producers, they welcome you with, a, with open arms. They think that this is a, the promised land. As time goes on, find that the, the glitz and the glamour of the coal mining industry soon wears off and you wake up to them, what they're up to. They're there to use you for as much as they can get. In uh, the government's own figures say that there'll be 10 mines closed here in the next eight years. Modern underground mines use a fraction of the workforce that I once did, and certainly a lot less than an open cut. Unemployment here in, uh, in the younger levels is the highest in the Hunter Valley and it tapers off as it gets higher because of the, the average age of the miners, 42, 43. They want to employ a certain thought process, not particularly what they can do, it's what they think. A lot of the people around here don't think what the mining companies want. Plus they'd rather import people from outside the area, contractors and stuff, they're cheaper. The money that's involved in the coal industry at the moment is the thing that we've got to get away from that thought. We've got to look to the future, not for what's going in the pockets of the resource companies and the state government uh, treasury. I don't say we're going to shut it down tomorrow. We need a gradual transition away from coal and fossil fuels. These people can be retrained into uh, fitting up houses such as mine with solar panels. They've got to be manufactured, there's got to be factories put, there's people got to do those jobs. As the coal industry starts to retrench people, and people see that, they, that they've not got any value out of it, those people will, will start to build up an impetus for the government to start making the coal industry pay its way. We need a mechanism in place, a transition mechanism, fully funded by the coal companies. Not one cent of the taxpayers' money should go into it. Any of the locals who wanted a job would go into the, uh, the, the training system for installation of renewables, and they would be trained in universities that would be built here in the Hunter Valley. Then the miners that are already employed, because the average age is over 40, about 42, those people are going to retire. That coal industry transition would then pay for retraining of those people. And despite what Tony Ma, the union executive says, we can be retrained, I can be retrained, other people can be retrained. To suggest we can't is criminal. I'm not anti-worker, I'm anti-coal industry.